Good morning, everybody, and welcome to morning number two of Watch Time Live. I'm Minda Larson. I'm the event manager for Watch Time Magazine. I see so many familiar names uh, popping up. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Kurt. I see so many of you. It's great to see you all. Hi, John. Um, we are very excited to start this morning with Bell & Ross featuring Carlos Rosillo, the CEO of Bell & Ross. And I just want to go over a couple things at the end of the presentation. So in about 30 minutes, you will all um, be encouraged and allowed to ask questions. And it would be great if you could submit those questions via the Q&A chat at the bottom of your screen. And then if we select your question, we will actually put you on video. So you'll be able to speak to Carlos directly and we'll be able to see you. So just be aware that you uh, might be on video in front of everybody. I am uh, calling in from New York City. Our uh, editor in chief, Roger Ruger, is calling in from Switzerland and Carlos is in Paris this morning, this afternoon for him. We would love to hear where you all are calling in from, where you are. Uh, let us know in the chat. And without further ado, welcome to Roger Ruger. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. This is me calling in from Zurich. Um, I'm very excited. Bell & Ross was founded almost 30 years ago by the two lifelong friends, Bruno Bellamiche and Carlos Rosillo the later one who has joined us today. And I'm very excited to hear more from him about what the brand has in store for us this year. And after last night's press release, um, I think it's big news for you guys. And it could also be big news for us. And I'm extremely excited to learn more about what you guys have been up to in the last couple of months. Um, like it's a bit of a tradition, um, what, Carlos, are you wearing today? Because that's always, every time I see you in Basel or every time I used to see you in Basel, you had something very special on the wrist. Um, what are you wearing today? Oh, hello, Roger. Hello, Minda. Hello, Michael. I'm so happy to be with you and to share my passion with collectors. What I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing one of my favorites, it's the watch actually I was wearing during my wedding when I got, I got married uh, the year two, uh, two, 2000, 2002. And I was wearing a jumping hour, a vintage jumping hour. Uh, I can show you, I can show you if I'm, uh, so hold on a sec. So. This, this is a watch I'm wearing. Uh, so this is the watch I was wearing during my wedding. And why I choose to wear this? Because this is, I think, a collector watch. It's the watch that we have developed with Vincent Calabrese, a great gentleman belonging to the academy. And um, it's a platinum case, gold dial, jumping hour. And the particularity also is that at the bottom at six o'clock, you have a power reserve that allows you to control the level of energy you need to make the jump. So I was ready for the jump when I got married. What is the bezel made of? Well, uh, the bezel is in platinum. All the case and the bezel are in platinum. Oh, wow. I, yeah. I unfortunately haven't seen that in real life, but we'll... Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to find it because uh, there were only 99 pieces and I've got the, my lucky number, which is number 13. Uh, our lucky number in uh, Bell & Ross is 13 because we were registered the uh, 13th of September. Yeah. That's a very exciting watch. Um, as I mentioned uh, in my brief intro um, yesterday, or more, more precisely today is a big day for your brand. Um, do you want to take us through like the, the story of Bell and Ross and then the novelties for this year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I think it's important to have a, a little comprehension, a little understanding about where we're coming from and where we're going. So um, it's probably if we would write a book, we would call it uh, From the Cockpit to the Wiz because this is what has influenced us. So from the early days, we have been influenced by those kind of images. If you remember some movie like The Right Stuff with the story of Chuck Yeager and the beginning of the 
the aviation, it was this kind of, this kind of uh, movie that influenced us. And when we began with Bruno, we were in this kind of state of mind. Uh, and after, when uh, Bruno, his uh, partner, my friend that I know since I'm 14 years old, and this is the logo. And I think that what, what was interesting was that he could design a logo corresponding to what we're doing, which is a symbol of the watch, uh, which you can see uh, just below. And, and um, let's say that we have been we have been in four different steps in our history. In '92, uh, we started from the cockpit to the wrist. We we were influenced, we were inspired uh, by the dashboard, and we have been developing with Mr. Helmut Sim the first watches influenced by those those dashboards. The second thing that I wanted to uh, enhance is the spirit of the brand. At the center of the logo, there is this ampersand. This ampersand is not just a beautiful sign. It is the philosophy of Bell & Ross. What do you mean by that? I'm not a watchmaker, but, and Bruno is a designer, but when we began, we began with four expertise that, and we joined forces, the design, the watchmaker, the engineering, and the professional users. And I think the good balance between those four has made the adventure of Bell & Ross possible. This is, this is really the symbol that is the most important of Bell & Ross. And well, when we began, those are the type of watches we have been developing with Mr. Sin, uh, the first watch. And as you can see, we have been very faithful to our DNA, to our origins. And later on, when we move forward, uh, well, function drive design. This is the philosophy of design that we have been always applying for with four design principles, the legibility, the functionality, the precision, and the reliability. And this is how we made possible all the Bell & Ross watches. So those are those four principles. And we have been developing with professional users uh, I can mention a few of them, uh, some collaboration that we are proud, uh, whether it is from Air Force, from, uh, uh, from uh, civil defense, from space mission. Uh, we have been serving those elites because I think when they accomplish their missions, we are proud to provide those watches and to serve those heroic people. 97 is another chapter. When we began, we began with our passion, but with no money and with a capacity to produce due to Mr. Helmut Sin. But the growth was very strong and we needed to stabilize the financial aspect. So we were lucky to have passionate partners. The Vertimer family entered into the capital because they love our watches, they have been wearing them and they joined Bell & Ross in 97. And this made possible to have many, many other options for the, for, for the suite of the adventure. One of them was the pr production site, because of course, to control your destiny, you need to have a factory. And this was made possible by the Chanel people. So we could develop in the finest Swiss craftsmanship or watches. And uh, we could develop, uh, here I quote some, let's call it for Bell & Ross, some exceptional pieces. Hydromax, world record of water resistance, 11,111 meters. The Challenger Deep, a mythical watch. One of the only quartz watch filled with liquid. The Jumping Hour, another version of Jumping Hour that we have been developing with Vincent Calabrese. And the X2, to beyond micro rotor, I will speak about high end watchmaking later on. Today we have, let's say, three collections the vintage, like the vintage jumping out that I'm wearing, the instrument, the dashboard, and the experimental, where we go to high end watchmaking. The 2005 has been another important step for Bell & Ross. 
2005 was the, bir the birth of all icons. Every brand needs to have an icon. And what we did is to transfer from the cockpit and to put it on the waist. And I think this was an important achievement for Bell & Ross because we have made in terms of design something very simple, but that was a statement to have to capture the instrument that is in the cockpit in the dashboard and to put it on the waist. And today, let's say that we are, we are faithful to our origins, L and C. Let me share with you a video that illustrates what is Bell & Ross today. It's through those three fields. Let, let us see the video together. This movie shows what are the three elements that we want to supply. 2019, a new step. What is the new step? Well, I remember last year uh, when we were so happy to share with you. I think this launching, we have prepared this launching many, many years ago, but the beauty, okay. To succeed in a launching, it's not only to have a good product, it's to have partners that you can share with them the, the, the launching and that everything is connected at the same moment. And this is what we have been able to achieve last year. So what was the BR5? The exercise of BR5 was very simple. We wanted to penetrate the urban, the urban lifestyle category. So for that, Bruno wanted to pay a tribute to our iconic case. So to keep what makes the icon. What makes the icon? A round in a square, four screws, an iconic dial. From there, he wanted an integrated bracelet. So we, we, he has smoothened the square. A new metal bracelet corresponding to the original metal bracelet that we used to have in a professional line and a perfect integration between the square and the metal bracelet. This was the beer of five from last year. So last year, we have done this, this move uh, with this integrated design and with some execution with the skeleton uh, movement that we have developed. And here you see all the technical aspect, the construction of the case and the construction also of the, of the engine. This year we have developed some new uh, new uh, collection on 05, the bicolor, the gold one, and also there was the skeleton blue. And today, just today, we are launching a new extension on the 05 line. What is this extension? Well, it is the chrono. The purpose of the chrono is quite simple. to add a new function on the O5 line.
I'm so happy to share with you this novelty. This novelty is corresponding, to, of course, to an obvious new extension because when you love aviation, you need to have a chrono. And when we started last year, the 05 line, we knew that there would be this new line, this new extension with a new dimension, 42 instead of 40, plus the chrono functions. Here you see the details of the chrono with uh, the integrated pushes, the chrome, the, also the, the, the counters, the way we have done with the, the treated, the design of the counters, and also the integration, you see here the rubber strap because all those O5 line are, even if they were sewed with an integrated bracelet, they are also available on rubber. And here you see, this is a detail which is very important. Why are O5 can adapt to many waists? Here you see the angle between the case and the, and the bracelet, 50 degrees not 45, not 55. The 50 degrees makes that it can adapt to any, any waist from a woman's size waist to uh, someone who has a bigger, bigger waist. And this is due to this 50, 50 uh, degree angle. Uh, here you see the back of the case with the, the 828.94 on the, on the chrono. And here you see the details of the movement with the oscillating rotor. This is a new position for the new Oyovan positioning of the brand, corresponding to those images and to this lifestyle, going from the guy who runs the bike in the city, or he could be a photographer. Uh, let me share and let me make your attendance discover a movie that I'm, I'm very happy to share with you because I think it's a beautiful movie. So let's discover the new movie of the Chrono O5. So th this was Paris and I was so happy to share with you. Just for the finish of the, my presentation, because I'm too long, uh, but I know that your audience uh, loves watchmaking. So I wanted to share something that is not so much uh, known about the high-end watchmaking at Bell & Ross. We have developed some beautiful collaboration according to our philosophy. And what we have been doing is, for instance, the X2. X2 is quite an amazing watch. No casing, just a movement between two sapphire pl plates. So it's what I call the sandwich of crystal. Chris, a sapphire crystal plate, two sapphire in fact at the back, and then just the movement in between this sandwich. It's a square movement. It's a micro rotor. It's a tourbillon micro rotor four millimeters high, so very slim, and no casing. Here is the watch. Another one was the full sapphire. Quite complicated to develop. Here is the watch. 
it's a it's this this is like a big diamond on the wheel. It's you have a total transparency because the casing is just made in sapphire. And I will finish my presentation by this movie. Uh, it's I think the only movie where you can see how it's possible to make the production of a sapphire clays. Let us have the pleasure to discover that. Merci mille fois, Carlos. That was uh, really a highlight to start the day with, especially because I haven't seen the, the watches in real life or moving. So that's very exciting. Um, we're already getting the first question. I think the obvious one would be the pricing on a new BR05 chronograph in the US. Pricing in the US would be 50, uh, 59 on rubber strap, 5,900, and 64 on metal for the chrono. Thank you. And one of the questions that I received in advance from a, from a collector was, and, and it ties in nicely with your introduction regarding partnerships. Um, I know that you have been working with Formula One teams. You, I mean, at some point you even designed a, your, your own car, motorbikes, et cetera, et cetera. But especially when working for armed forces or like special clients, do you get something out of it of the partnership that goes beyond having produced watches? Like, do you learn more about materials? Do you get access to different ways to construct a watch or how they are using it, how to make them more robust? What's in it for you besides just the, the partnership, like the the obvious um, collaboration? Uh, very interesting questions. My response would be, we get two things. One, the technical aspect. Uh, all designers, when they see a Formula One, they get crazy. They love that. And when you speak with the, the Formula, one, Formula One team, in fact, they, they, they are the type of people who are passionate as all watchmakers, as all designers. And so uh, they are passionate about aerodynamics and the material they use are very inspirational. It means that uh, when, for instance, when we do with carbon forger, carbon forger is a material that has been used only in military airplanes or in Formula One. And therefore, we were able to develop some X1 carbon forger, which was only available in those fields. Second, not only the technical aspect, speaking with the engineers, and for instance, we have made possible that the engineers from Formula One visit our factory, but all watchmakers from the factory could visit the factory of Formula One. Second, and maybe more important, what do we learn from military? What do we learn from pilots? something that is key today, courage. 
Well, that's not what I would have expected. Thank you so much for, for giving us that insight. Um, and speaking of materials, we already just got a second question re regarding the movement. Can you tell what the oscillating weight um, of the new Chrono is made of and maybe share a little bit insight on where the movement comes from? Okay. Um, on the 05 Auto, the movement, the movement has been developed specifically for us by Celita. On the Chrono, it's a 2894 ETA. Uh, and in both of them, we have been developing the, oscill the oscillating mass. And as you can notice, the oscillating mass, uh, when you look at it, you think that it's very balanced. It's, it's totally, um, it's totally uh, balanced, uh, equilibrated. Uh, so sorry for my English, my poor English. I'm trying to cope with that. I hope that you can, you can, you can, you will make the, the useful translation to make that um, um, understandable. But um, uh, Bruno, who is a perfectionist in terms of design, initially he wanted to make something very equilibrated. But if you if you are totally equilibrated in the oscillating mass, it's not an oscillating mass because you need to have the the rotor to have the the the, the, the balance you need to have uh, not a perfect equilibrium because otherwise it doesn't rewide. So he had to shift to, to, to make a little gimmick and to make that it looks like very balanced, but in fact, there is a disequilibrium to make that the rotor could, could turn. Thank you. And since you've shown the Sapphire case model, um, we have Edmund asking about the water resistance of the Sapphire model <laughs> and additionally the shock resistance. So we don't know what he's planning on doing with the watch. But... <laughs> okay, okay. Um, water resistance is 100 meters. Wow. But um, okay, there were the, 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 the first one, the, the chrono that you have seen, it was the column wheel chrono. Uh, mono pusher, so quite uh, for tourbillon, quite special. But um, I can tell you that there were only five pieces. And I met a gentleman who was one of the first customers, and he came here, uh, and he came where he was very relaxed, wearing shorts, and he was wearing a NATO strap. And he, uh, it, it was a very interesting conversation to chat with the gentleman who, who was a very nice guy. And uh, he was super relaxed. And I say, but uh, can I ask you a question? Why are you wearing this, this complicated uh, watch on a, on a NATO strap? And he said, you know what? I enjoy having such a complicated watch and that nobody knows what it is. It's very understated, even if it's impressive technically, people do not know what I'm wearing. They even might think that this is a plastic watch and he was proud about that <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing that insight um watching the clock uh on my computer screen um for once um i think it is time to wrap up um carlos it's been an honor to have you as the ceo of balandros join us today it is not often that we get to have a ceo of a watch company in our living rooms or offices depending on where we all are but it's been a true pleasure a true honor and thank you so much for spending time with us today we're now heading over to the next panel thank you so much merci mi fois à bientôt Merci à vous. Thank you, Minda. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for the audience. I hope that was not too long. It was my pleasure to share with you. Bye.